Well, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, thank you very much. Um, let me first start by thanking my arwah, father, parents, my mother, my father, my relatives, and of course uh, all the institutions I've been involved. They've given me the opportunity to do what I've done, such as of course the Academy of Science, without which I wouldn't have been to Antarctica three times. Without UTM, I wouldn't have gone to Everest. Without Nature and Nature Society, I wouldn't have uh, conserved Bloom and the Rompin. Without some Nation Scientific Association, I wouldn't have done a couple of things in life as well. So it has been a privileged life, for which I thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for all of that. I started with a humble beginning, as you know, my my father was just a, a rubber tapper. Then he moved to Kwab in Uludinke in us. Way out in the Ulu, um, my house is the last in the kampung next to the jungle, and I could hear tigers and roaring at night. You know. So I suppose that's where I started learning to, to I wouldn't say love forests, but to appreciate what forests and the environment and nature. And uh, you live a life in the kampung, you know, with the paddy fields, with the leeches, with uh, in a pachat and. Uh, everything else that is in the kampung. So you, you, you learn to enjoy life. You know? And being a, a humble, um, poor family, you have to survive. You, know? you, you tap rubber, you collect fruits, you, know? you sell things which well, you can. Then my father went, moved to Kuala as a driver, to Naramputte. And Naramputte, having, having had no son, adopted me as his adopted son. So I made sure that I went to school and uh, there at Tonkumok School, then lucky at up to Form 3, then to Royal Military College, who gave me the foundation for this attire. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, to why I did forestry? It was more uh, an act of chance. I wanted to do medicine. And uh, being every year, the top student of the Royal Military College was given. Um, Ministry of Defense uh, scholarship to do medicine every year. But come to my year, they stopped it. And so, and I didn't apply for, for JPA scholarship. So, but I wanted to go overseas, and the only scholarship that ensured that I go overseas was Colombo Plan. And the scholarship available was forestry. So I went in forestry without knowing what on earth it was, but you know. I have no regrets. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I've achieved. But my, my profession uh, is what I've done, I've achieved now through forestry, and I'm very pleased with it. Bring me close to nature, close to the environment, and the chance to meet all of you and to have uh, friends like uh, people in the academy. I mean, that's life, you know. And I'm grateful for all that I've achieved in life. Well, when the, I came back from my postgraduate studies, uh, they sent me to FRI Kapong. I said, oh, well, what is that? And, uh, out in the Ulu. So I went there, and they had 19 research officers and one PhD. So I said, how on earth are you going to do research with 19 research officers and one PhD? So I made up my mind to change. And then, of course, my mentor was Yan uh, Bahagia Tansu Yani who was then the director of Rubber Research Institute. So I went to see him. He said, Saleh, you got to convert to such body. So I borrowed all his uh, acta, his acts, and then worked through the system. I was uh, crucified by the forest department. I was told off in public, but I persevered. And Alhamdulillah, in 1985, we became a statutory body. And when I retired in 1995, we had 190 PhDs and 600 research officers within a period. You compare that with one PhD, and 19 research officers when I first started. And uh, at the same time, I, I became the president of the International Union of Forest Research Organizations, which is a global body for forest research, with 600 of us institutions, 160 countries. And I was the first president of that August organization in 100 years history of the organization from outside Europe and America. And through that, I had international connections to link frame in our research to the international research community in forestry and forest products. So I was privileged in that sense that you were there at the right time. But more important, you had the courage 
to do what you believe that you should do. Oftentimes, we hesitate because it's, it's a difficult. As I said, I was crucified. For 10 years, uh, First Department staff, who were my friends before, refused to talk to me. When I go to First Street Department, they close the doors to me. And uh, my staff couldn't enter the First Street Department, couldn't enter the forest, because the Director General there was so against me changing Forest Research Institute to a statutory body. But if, not, if I did not do that, Forest Research would never have reached what it's achieved now. And the FRIM would not have become the top tropical forest research institute in the world within that short space of time. Passion, yes, uh, you must have passion whatever you do. And, and more important, you have a commitment. You have passion, you have a dream. And then you follow that dream, you follow that passion. But always remember that um, the eyes are probably always on you. So underlying all that is integrity. Integrity, honesty. And my late father told me, and I wrote that in my autobiography, he said, even if it's one cent, if it's not yours, don't take it. And I've been challenged in my life as a Director General of Forestry and Forest Department at, at short space of time. People offering me money left, right, and center. Um, Chinese Taukes bring envelopes of cash. You know? But I have resisted that. And then I can look at people in the face and say, what I have little now that I have is the hard-earned cash, hard-earned money that you work through your own effort. And that's important, the integrity. But as you, said, you rightly said, you must have that passion. That passion is the one that drives us. Whatever you are, whether you're a photographer, you're an artist, you're a physicist, you, you're an administrator, you must have passion and love for what you do. Underlying all that is, you must enjoy what you're doing. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, don't do it. Because then it becomes a bore. So that's fundamental to me. Well, for that, I must thank um, none other than our first president, uh, Ian Bhagir Tansri, Professor Dr. Omar um, Abdurrahman. Because he's the one who said, Saleh, take the Antarctica, lead the Antarctica project. And I didn't know anything about Antarctica. I'm a forester. How do I do not so, but as I said, when you're given that responsibility, you do it with passion, you do it. Right? And so, Alhamdulillah, after 10 years of uh, sending scientists to Antarctica, we were still not members of the Antarctica Treaty. So, what do I do? So, you look for opportunities. The opportunity opened when the, the former uh, uh, Sri Padika Pagina Yamutan Agong, Duli uh, Mahmoud Sultan uh, when he was the Agong, I invited him to go to Antarctica. He said, Antarctica to Apus? So, uh, so, it's a white continent, nothing in there except penguins. He said, OK. I said, but, I'm Pun Tuanku. You cannot go to Antarctica without Malaysia signing the treaty first. And within a month after he said yes, the cabinet approved us. After 10 years of research, so that's what I mean. You've got to find ways and means of doing it. So Tuanku uh, landed on the ice immediately in, the, I think, November 2011, immediately after we signed the treaty. And I'm very pleased to say that in his farewell speech as uh, Yang Putan Agong, he said one of the highlights of his career as Yang Putan Agong was his visit to Antarctica. And for that, I must thank the Academy of Science for giving me the responsibility, the opportunity. And Yang Bagi Tan Sri Dr. Omar. And now we have formed the foundation, Yasan Penyidikan Antarctica Sultan Mizan. We have formed an organization which will now take Malaysia into higher heights, I hope, in Antarctica research. There's a tremendous opportunity for research in Antarctica. But why must we conserve Antarctica? Because it is the largest, the seventh largest, um, the fifth largest continent, no, seventh largest continent in the world. It has uh, three quarters of the fresh water uh, in, the whole, in the world. And if climate change takes place and the ice melts, island states like Singapore may disappear. So it behoves us to protect Antarctica. It behoves us to undertake research there so we understand what the implications of the Antarctica for Malaysia, for humankind.